in the Middle East, um, the, I'm talking about sheep, um, there were the flocks of sheep were small, you know, maybe 20 or 30 sheep to a shepherd. And the shepherd walked in front of the sheep and the sheep followed the shepherd. In New Zealand, it's um, a reverse, you know, because I've worked on sheep farms. And, um, and in New Zealand, we have dogs and everything like that. But Jesus, he is the good shepherd and he walks in front of his sheep and we are the sheep of his pasture, says in the word. And you can read about the sheep, you know, in John chapter 10 also. But the sheep don't walk in front of the shepherd. So that so we don't walk in front of Jesus, but we follow him and let him lead us. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. How are we all doing? Good? That's great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, worship team. That was really great. Let's just give the worship team a clap as they come down. I've lost, oh, there we go. I was going to say I've lost my lectern, but it's over here. Cool, thank you. So we're really excited this morning to um, present to you the vision uh, of our amazing day that we had a week ago now that um, Brian so graciously showed the <laughs> photos for. Um, First of all, though, I think we've got a message that was um, a, a prophecy that Matt Lansdowne, does everyone remem remember Matt Lansdowne? He came just, uh, just a few days ago. He actually had a word which he, he posted. And so we thought it was really quite appropriate to bring that this morning for you. So we're just going to... Uh, show that now. Oh, and no, I've got the clicker, so. <laughs> Again. <laughs> hey guys, I just want to jump on here and share a couple of thoughts. I actually want to share a vision that I had a couple of days ago as I was praying which was really helpful for me. It just gave some language to um, to the season that I'm in personally, but that I suspect many people are in at the moment. And, and, the, and to just give some context, um, you know, as a world, we are in a whole new place right now. Five years ago, the world was completely different. We have shifted from one, um, not just a micro season, but one kind of macro season into another season, or one era into another era. The world is completely different, and for us to interact with the world with the same expectations that we did in the last era um, would leave us disappointed. And so as a church, we're kind of in this space right now where we're grappling with these kind of big decisions and how we navigate the way forward. And... Um, and in this space, it's kind of like we're in this in-between space where something, um, something really has died and something is about ready to be born, but we're kind of right in the middle of learning how to let go of the dead thing and learning how to lay hold of the thing that we can't quite see yet, but we know that it's there. Um, and so we're, 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 we're having to ask questions around things like, you know, what do we hold on to and protect? from the last season as a church and bring forward into the next season and what do we let go of and the things that we're meant to let go of for this next season and need to let go of to actually enter into this next season can sometimes be actually terrifying to let go of. And so, um, so we're in this kind of, in some ways, a little bit of a dilemma. And I, had to, I was praying about this and I was reading through the Book of Acts, which I highly recommend you do. 
powerful, powerful um, piece of scripture. Um, I was reading through the book of Acts and I was praying and I had a vision. And in the vision I saw the road, the main road leading out of the town that I live in, this town here. Here I am, at home. And uh, I drive this road and many people from our area drive this road all the time, every day. And I'm driving up this particular corner that I'm very familiar with and the, the centre line in the road um, actually just turned off the road and from that point on there was no more centre line. The centre line, the white dots in the middle of the road left the road and they went into the bush on the side of the road and I looked to the, where the centre line was pointing and I, I heard this voice saying, hey, over here. And I looked and it was Jesus and he was in the bush. And he was paving a new way. He was paving a new road. The road that we had always travelled on, the road that we had gotten used to, the road that um, we were confident to know where, where it ended up. Um, the, the, the road that, um, that was, you know, the safe road to travel. Uh, that road um, was not the road that Jesus was continuing on. It's a road that he was on in the past, but as he is moving forward, it's the road that he's leaving. And um, and I realised that we're kind of in the season of um, of having to make a choice between the road that we have become used to, the road that we've become familiar with, the road that we have become comfortable with, the road that we can easily predict and know the outcome of, or the new road that Jesus is on. And we, we can no longer choose the old beaten path and the centre line. We have to choose either the centre line or the old beaten path. The centre line represents Jesus and the old beaten path represents those things that we're super comfortable with that make us feel super secure but, and that worked really well in the last season but that in this season aren't going to work for us. And so my prayer um, as I've been praying for you know, just for our journey, what we're, what we're kind of walking through um, individually and as a ministry, and, as, and my prayer for you is really, Lord, give us courage to let go of the things that we need to let go of in order to move forward into the path that you are paving for us. God, raise up pioneers to pave the road forward for a generation into the new season that you have for us, not just in the world, but as a church in the world. And so I hope that blesses some of you guys. Just a thought from my heart to you. And um, big love. Peace. Cool. Awesome word, eh? We just thought it was really appropriate for this season that we're heading into something really new, uh, and we're really, really excited. We're really excited about what, what the Lord has just, we feel, downloaded to us about our church and where we're at and the new that we're, gonna, we're heading into. So, sorry, I've just left my clicker behind. So we're just going to step through that. I'm going to have a time of just sharing what the vision is. And then we're going to have a time after that the oversight team are going to come up and join me. And if you have any questions, uh, the mic can be handed around and we can, uh, we can try and answer the questions that you might have. Okay, all good. So uh, let's get on to... The family that prays and plays together stays together. So our, our vision for the, the, the future is really just based around uh, being together, playing together, praying together, having that time of God and making it fun. Because I don't think we want to move into a future that is dull and boring. <laughs> I think, you know, we, we want to, we want the spirit to move. We want fellowship. So let's get into this vision. All right. I'm just going to read through and leave most of the explanation till maybe after. 
to encourage people of all ages to know God intimately and experience his presence, to ignite passion in their hearts for Jesus and his bride, to be witnesses of his love to the lost and to inspire believers to pursue active involvement in the life of the church. Something you know, I have been really passionate about is, uh, you know, over the last four years with COVID and everything like that, the, the enemy's had a field day with church. He really has. He's tried to divide. He's, he's you know, he's just decimated some churches. And I'm just so passionate about the church, about the body of Christ. I'm passionate about the bride. And I really, really want to see the bride of Christ thrive because we're in the end times and we're getting ready for the return of the bridegroom. So I'm really excited to move forward. And the key goals, let's get my next one, are growing our love and passion for God. Main thing. Being led by and developing a deeper dependence on his spirit. Maturing in Christ as his disciples to our community and the nations. And protecting the church family unit and what it means to be part of the wider body of Christ. So we have uh, the oversight team and I, we, on the week leading up to the, uh, what do you call it, mountaintop day, wasn't it? Uh, on the Tuesday I met with um, Caitlin and we were just talking about church, about kids church and, and her vision for kids church. And as we were talking, she was mentioning things like she'd love to get the, the uh, parents together and just have, you know, have fun, have, have a good time uh, with, with everyone and the family unit. And so, and I had that very much on my heart for a corporate thing, you know, that we're all coming together and, and meeting together and having, having fun. And we were sort of talking about, um, you know, oh, we could have like little, you know, egg, egg and spoon races and stuff like that, you know, just uh, fun things. And and then I was thinking, oh, yeah, we could be on like teams, you know, getting together and, and sort of, uh, you know, maybe wearing team colours. And then just the, the word houses dropped into my head. And I thought, oh, houses, you know, the houses that you have in, in schools and... Um, in colleges that you you have, I don't know if everyone is familiar with houses, but um, it just it just kind of dropped in my head, and so I was kind of thinking about that through through the week, and then on th uh, Wednesday night, I didn't sleep well at all. <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night, and the Lord just started downloading all these ideas, all these things about houses and how it could work in the church. And I started to get really, really excited because the main thing about houses is the pastoral care, the overall pastoral care uh, of each individual and the teamwork and the coming together of people. So I just wanted to read through, I'll... Um, Actually, I'll, I'll leave that till after. So what are houses? Just a few thoughts about what houses are. This is uh, something... So it actually started in the United Kingdom. Um, it, they're about group lo loyalty. So the pastoral care in some boarding schools, a primary purpose of the house system is to provide pastoral care. There's closer relationships between the teachers and the students. There's peer relationships, so it's fostering of community feeling. There's a camaraderie, so this is a really neat, uh, neat quote here. This camaraderie and solidarity is second to none, and the benefits of this vertical interaction where the young look up to the elder and the elder look out for, the, for and support the younger are profound. So it prevents the deterioration, deterioration 
of children's education and social progress. So if we're looking at a, in a church function, how this would work, is we're all supporting one another. The younger would be supporting the older, the older supporting the younger. We're all working together to stay on track, to, to help each other to grow in the Lord, to build that, uh, that community feeling and to bring uh, a sense of belonging into the, into the church, into um, being a part of something. So the secondary focus is obviously competition between houses, and this would all be fun. So I'm thinking, like, you know, we had, uh, Pat and I, my husband, we work in, in special needs school, and when the kids would play games, they would all cheer each other on. So it wasn't like, you know, super competitive where they'd all cry if they didn't, <laughs> they didn't win. But they would, uh, if, if the other team scored a goal, then they would all cheer. And that's what I'm really envisaging, that it would be out of love that we could get together, we could do some really cool things together and have that, that uh, friendly competition and bringing together each other and having an ultimate goal maybe at the end of the year of, uh, you know, a house competition sort of thing. So let's have a look. We, I really, I looked at houses and usually they're sort of named after people, but I really didn't think that that was quite a, appropriate in our setting. And what my heart is and, and our, you know, a lot of our hearts here is that we want to see the move of the Holy Spirit. We want to see more of God's presence and experience more of God's presence in our church. And so I was thinking, with the houses, why not name them after moves of God? So it'd be like a prophetic act that we're naming our, uh, the, our houses, our communities after a move of the Holy Spirit. And I started to think about what were the what are the sort of main I guess moves of the Holy Spirit around the world that we can think of? So if we go to our next slide, this is what it kind of looks like. So we have we have Azusa Street, we have Waihe Wave, so Waihe the revivals that happened up at the in Waihe. We have Welsh revival. And we have Toronto Blessing. So each of those has, has a different flavour. I believe uh, Toronto, no, Azusa Street and Welsh Revival actually happened around the same time and was part of uh, a movement across the globe. So what we're thinking is initially there would be two houses because we can see that there's maybe not enough um, uh, yeah, leadership at the moment that we can sort of go forward with four. But we'd look at two houses and then as, uh, as momentum built and hopefully by the beginning of next year we could, we could have the four houses and we would be uh, functioning within those four houses, but also coming together on a Sunday and, uh, yeah, bringing that together. So let's have a look at the structure. So the structure of it was we've got the heads, and they would be made up of oversight members. So initially we would have uh, Mari and Brian as, as heads of the houses, and then we have uh, the captains. They'll be made up of young adults. So just to give you context, heads, we're thinking, would make the spiritual direction, guidance, and any concerns. So if there's, there's any concerns amongst your, the, the body of that house, 
then the oversight team member, the, the head, would be the one to go to. The captains are young adults because they are people with just such great ideas. They've got uh, good... Um, they're really excited. They just love stepping into the new. So I'm really, really keen for this, how our model would work is that everyone has a function. Everyone has a, um, a purpose in, in, within the house. So young adults, uh, they are to share ideas and help organise events and things like that. And then we have chaplains. So the chaplains are mature Christians in the faith, and they're there for help and support. So they're the, they're the pastoral care of each, of each house. Uh, they're there to support. They're there to uh, help in any way. So if there's anything, any need in the body, they're the ones that come and uh, support and can help uh, connect people to the right, right people that need, you know, that need support. So that's the structure. What else have I got here? I think I've um, already covered that. So I'm just going to skip through that. All right, what will it look like? So we've got connection, pastoral care, and team spirit. So each house, each house has the opportunity to lead a service once a month. So I'm thinking really I'd love to keep it creative. So if we're thinking two, two houses for the rest of this year, we're looking at uh, once every two months, one of the houses would lead a service. And I really want it to be flavoured by that house and be able to give uh, the, the um, uh, independence back to the, the people to decide what they want to do for that service. So it could be something really, really creative and out of the box I'm totally happy for and we'll just, we just really want to see people's ideas. So each house has the opportunity to lead a service once a month with the freedom to journey outside the normal parameters of the Sunday service and think creatively. All right. Oh, that's right. Double click. Each week, a house collaborates together with ministry teams to serve as hosts in the Sunday service. Their role will be to look out for new people or those sitting on their own and make connection with them. The house members will also help out when needed throughout the service to fill in any gaps. And there's no pressure. We don't want people to be kind of pressuring others to sort of serve. But it's just something, even if it's just like sitting next to someone and making sure you're making that connection with them. That's a really, really important part of church is connecting. Sorry, going back. All right, and this is what I've already sort of mentioned. So we've got friendly competition. We'll see house points awarded for attending church and special events which contribute towards the annual House of the Year awards. So this is just totally fun, right? So it's just, it's just a fun way of getting people um, excited about coming to church. I'm, I'm really really keen to see uh, families come a into our church. I'm really keen to attract young people. And what I see in children and in young people is they really thrive off, uh, you know, that, um, what's the word I'm trying to think? Um, when there's something to aim for. Goals, thank you. <laughs> So there's a goal, there's something, there's an initiative. Uh, they really thrive off that. They thrive off um, mum and dad 
uh, joining them in a, in a fun activity. They just love that. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see how many young, how many children are going to be saying to their parents, Mum and Dad, we really have to go to church because we get house points for, church, for coming to church. So I just really want to see that, you know, that buy-in um, from, from the young people, from the children. I think we'll start to see, you know, more, more excitement about coming to church, more, um, more joining in and everyone, uh, you know, coming together for for some fun events. We're actually going to kick this off in a couple of weeks' time. So we've got a little bit to organise, but it's going to be fun. We're going to start with a... um, What did I call it? (laughs) I'm trying to think. It is a revival revival house showdown. Okay, so we're going to have a little quiz about all the things that each... uh, each house represents so each revival so from here to another two weeks time have a have a look up all these different revivals what were the key things in those revivals and then come on the day and we'll have a quiz and we'll be just uh, putting some questions out and you can just answer and once we have our teams, our houses together, then those points, you'll get to uh, add points for your house for the, for the end of year house awards. All right? So all just totally fun, just keeping it fun. Um, did I add this? I don't know if I did. I did, yes. So this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. I'm really, really mindful that we keep we keep it in the spirit of love, in in the love of Jesus. Um, uh, that's what I see working. That's what we see working is that it's it's uh it's a, I'm really mindful of how house home churches work. They're a real community, and I, I'd love to see community groups in our church where we're all looking after each other. Last quote, well, not quote. Scripture is First John four seven. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. 